In this video, we're going to take a look at the Unit 7 Lesson 13 practice problems. So number one says, find the arc length of an arc with a central angle of 2 pi over 3 radians and a radius of 6 units. So we have the formula for radians is a radian angle equals the arc length divided by the radius. And so we can just multiply the R up and we would get that the arc length equals the radian measure times the radius. So in this case, we are looking for the arc length and we have the angle measure, which is two pi over three radians, and we have the radius, which is six. So we'll do radians times um, radius. So that's gonna be 12 pi over three, and 12 divided by three is four, and we have that pi. So that is gonna be our arc length is four pi. In number two, it asks for the arc length for an arc associated with this central angle and a circumference. So this time they're giving us the circumference is 12 units. So we don't have the radius and the angle, we just have the angle. So we're gonna um, use the circumference formula here that, oops, let me write this down. So the circumference formula is equal to two times pi times the radius. So we'll be able to solve for the radius that way. So we have 12 is equal to two pi times the radius. So we'll divide by two pi. So 12 divided by two pi will be six over pi equals the radius since 12 divided by two is six. And we solve that pi on the bottom. So now we can go ahead and plug back into our um, arc length formula here. That arc length equals the radian measure, which is five pi over six, um, times the radius, which is six over pi. And the sixes will cancel, the pi's will cancel, and we will get that our arc length equals five. Um, all right, then in part C, it says the measure in radians of the central, find the measure in radians of the central angle for an arc that has an arc length of four units and a radius of three units. So we can use our um, kind of radian formula here that says that a radian measure is equal to the arc length, which is four, divided by the radius, which is three. So our angle is equal to four over three radians. All right, number two, a circle has a radius of 10 units for each angle measure, find the area of the sector associated with this. So you um, learned a formula in this lesson that the sector area is equal to one half times the radian measure times the radius squared for area of a sector. And um, so in this case, we know that the radius is 10 units in all cases. So we know this is gonna be 10 squared here. And so we'll just um, plug in the radian measure for each of these. So for this first one, we have one half times pi over eight times 10 squared, which is 100. And um, so we can start simplifying if we want to, or you can get, so this will be like 100 over one. So you'll get 100 pi um, over 16. So for sure, both of uh, 116 divide by four. So let's divide by four and we would get 25 pi on top and we would get four on bottom. And then this would be um, units squared since it's the area of the sector. Next one, we would have one half times three pi over four times the radius squared, so times 100. So this time um, we'd have 300 pi on top and then two times four, which is eight on bottom. Um, both of these divide by four, so 300 divided by four is 75, and eight divided by four is two. 
And then that's as far as that simplifies. So we could leave it as 75 pi over two units squared. You could certainly be using your um, calculator for a decimal answer also. All right, then one radian. So we have one half times one times 100. Um, so half of 100. So we get 50 units squared for this sector area. And then two radians, so we'd have one half times two times 100. Well, half of two is one, so we just get 100 units squared for the area of this sector. All right, number three says each circle has a shaded sector with a central angle measure in radians. What fraction of the circle is each sector? So how many pieces could we fit? Um, how many of these chunks could we fit into the whole circle? So that looks like one fourth. Um, you could fit that in four times. For this one, how many times will this fit in? Well, remember that pi radians is here. Okay, it's like 180 degrees. Pi is halfway around. And so this one says that we have one twelfth of pi. So that means that 12 of these will fit up here. And so 12 would fit down here. So we'd have 24 of these little sectors total. So this is 1 24th of the circle. Um, and this is, so now we have 5 pi over 6. So how many, um, how many of these are going to fit into um, this whole circle? So remember, the whole circle is uh, 2 pi. So we'd want to figure out how many times this would fit into um, 2 pi. And um, a couple different ways that you can, can do this. Um, but you could take 5 pi over 6 and divide it by the whole thing of 2 pi. So 5 pi over 6 and division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if we take a part divided by the whole, that'll give us the fraction. So by definition, part over whole will give us our fraction. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So then the pi's will cancel. 5 times 1 is 5. Um, 6 times 2 is 12. So this will fit in here, or this is 5 twelfths of the whole circle. Find the radian measure of each angle. So remember that the um, total circle in radians is 2 pi. And so we want to figure out what portion of a circle in degrees. So this is radians and 360 is the total in degrees. So we can figure out um, what portion 30 is out of 360. So 30 over 360, those, so those zeros will cancel. Um, 36 and 3 both divide by 3, so we get 1 12th. So 30 degrees is 1 12th of the entire circle, so 1 12th of 2 pi. So that's going to be 2 pi over 12, which simplifies to pi over 6 radians. Um, 45, maybe you just know that 45 is one eighth of a circle. Okay, you can fit eight 45 degree chunks. If you've forgotten, you can always do 45 over 360. Both divide by 45, so 45 divided by 45 is one. 360 divided by 45 is eight. So one eighth of two pi is gonna be two pi over eight, which is pi over four radians. So then 50 degrees, okay, so 50 out of the total 360, both of those divide by 10, so that is 5 36ths of a circle, okay, so 5 36 times 2 pi is going to give us 10 pi over 36, then 10 and 36 both divide by 2, so we would get 5 pi over 18 for the radian measure. 
So taking and figuring out your portion of your circle that you have. So what is this degree out of the total? And then proportioning that to 2 pi. Find the degree measure of each angle. So now this is just working um, backwards still of like part to whole. So remember the whole circle in radians is 2 pi, 360 for degrees. So now we have this partial radian, so we're going to divide it by the whole. So we're going to do pi over 3 divided by 2 pi. And I write it like this because I'm going to want um, to flip and multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we'll multiply by 1 over 2 pi. So those pi's will cancel and we'll get 1 sixth of the circle. So this is 1 sixth of 360. So then we'll do 1 sixth of 360, which is 60 degrees. Pi over 2 radians. So a couple, I mean, and you can look at this in a couple different ways. So maybe you remember pi over 2, that the whole, that half of a circle is pi. So then pi over 2 is going to be halfway there. So pi over 2 in degrees, how many degrees is it? Because this would be 180 degrees. So half of 180 degrees would be 90. So you could figure it out that way as well. So if there's um, some that you can think about the picture for. And similar, like if you had wanted to do that for this pi over 3. So taking pi, which is halfway of the circle. So here's pi and splitting it to three equal chunks. Okay, so pi divided into three equal parts. And then pi again is 180 degrees. So this would be 180 divided by 3, which is 60. So you could have done it that way as well. Um, and then 3 pi over 4. Okay, so this is, you could look at this as 3 fourths of the way to pi. So if we're going to continue on looking at something like this, here's 1 pi, 3 fourths of the way. So we want to think about splitting this into 4 equal parts. And we want to be three-fourths of the way here. So how big is each chunk here? Would be thinking about 180 divided into four equal parts, which would be 45 for each of these. So we have 45 here, 45 here, and 45 here for a total of 135 degrees. So three-fourths of the way to pi. Or you can also multiply 3 fourths times 180 and get that 135 that way. Um, and then 3 radians. So this final one. Um, so 3 radians. So we don't really know exactly where 3 is. Pi is 3.14. So we do know it's going to be really close to 180 degrees. Um, but this one we'll have to think about doing 3 out of the total, so 3 out of 2 pi, and then timesing it by 360 to figure out um, that. And I would multiply this in your calculator. So do 3 times 360 divided by 2 pi, and you'll get 171.9 degrees when you multiply that all the way out, which again makes sense because 3 radians is really close to 3.14, which is pi, which is half of a circle. All right, calculate the radian measure of a 225 degree angle. You can use any method you want. Um, so if we kind of do, again, thinking about where 180 is at. So this is pi, and we know this is the same as 180 degrees. So if we are thinking about how far or 225 versus 180, so 225 is 180 plus 45. Okay, so we know that 225 is going to be right here. It's 45 degrees further here. And we know that a 45 degree chunk is a fourth of the way to 180. So it's a four, whoops, these are terrible. Let me 
use some straight lines here. Okay, so if we look at 45 as being a fourth of the way here, right? So then we could think about how many, so this is one fourth of pi. So now how many fourths of pi do we have? One, two, three, four, five fourths. So we have five fourths of pi. So five pi over four would be our radian measure. So that's one way to think about it. If you can split one, 225 into 180 plus 45. You can also um, calculate it by thinking about 225 as part of 360, part of the total. So you can start simplifying this down, okay, and dividing down the fraction, and you will get um, 25 over eight, so that's five eighths of the whole circle. And then remember that the whole circle is two pi. So then you can multiply this and you'll get 10 pi over eight. Both of these divide by two, so you would end up with five pi over four by partitioning it as part of the whole. So part of the whole degree should equal part of the whole radian and find it that way. All right, Andre and Diego are saving money. They each hope to save $500. They're tracking their progress on the circles in the image. Diego thinks that Andre has saved more money than Diego has saved. Andre thinks they've saved the same amount. Do you agree with either of them? Show or explain your reasoning. So each of them are hoping to save $500. And so they're looking for the same total. They want to save the same total. So each of them are, are the same um, portion around this circle, right? So each of them have gone three-fourths of their total. So they're both three-fourths of the way to their goal. And since their goal is the same, they've saved the same amount. Okay, so they've saved the same amount of money because both are three-fourths um, of the way to 500. Um, Claire Miss class and Jada is teaching her how to construct the circumscribed circle of a triangle. Here's the instructions that Jada wrote. Um, so she says, first of all, you need to construct three perpendicular bisectors of the triangle sides. The point where the perpendicular bisectors intersect is called the circumcenter. Then you construct a circle centered at the circumcenter with a radius set to the distance between the circumcenter and the vertex. If the triangle has a circumscribed circle, the circle you constructed will go through all vertices. Um, do you agree with Jada's instructions? Explain your reasoning. So. Circumscribed circle definitely needs the circumcenter, and the circumcenter is where the three perpendicular bisectors meet. So that is absolutely true. So we would construct the perpendicular bisectors to get the circumcenter. Then we would con connect the circumcenter to the vertex to get the circle that goes around. The only thing that I don't really agree with in what Jada said is the word if. Okay, so this word if the triangle has a circumscribed circle, okay? A triangle is always going to have a circumscribed circle, okay? So the only thing I disagree with is that a triangle is definitely going to have one, okay? All triangles have um, a circumscribed circle. So this is just unlike the quadrilateral. Remember, a cyclic quadrilateral only has a circumscribed circle if the opposite angles add to 180. So quadrilaterals don't necessarily have a circumscribed circle, but every triangle does. <clears throat> 